Hello and welcome to Co-Apps, a quick guide to the Renters Reform Bill. My name is Jeremy and I am one of the sales and lettings negotiators at Co-Apps. The general outline of the bill is as follows. Section 21, no fault evictions, will be abolished so landlords can only evict a tenant in reasonable circumstances defined in law. Section 8, grounds of possession, will be reformed so that they are comprehensive, fair and efficient, striking a balance between protecting tenant security and landlords' rights to manage their property. Assured and assured shorthold tenancies will be moved onto a single system of periodic tenancies. This means that tenants will be required to give two months notice to leave their tenancies. Landlords will be able to evict tenants in reasonable circumstances defined by law. Notice for increasing rents will be doubled. Landlords must give two months notice before any rent increase can occur and increases can only happen once a year. Minimum housing standards for the private rented sector will be introduced, widening the decent home standards. Homes must not have any serious health and safety hazards and landlords must keep properties in a good state of repair for tenants. Rent repayment orders will also be broadened to cover repayment for homes that do not meet this standard. Tenants will be given more rights to keep pets in properties. Landlords will be given protection by the amendment of the Tenant Fees Act 2019. Bans on renting to families with children or those on benefits will be outlawed. A single government approved ombudsman will be introduced so that all landlords will have properties in England will have to sign up. This will be supported by a new digital property portal to assist landlords in understanding and demonstrating compliance with legal requirements. What it means for our landlords. The National Residential Landlords Association has proposed that tenancies remain fixed term if the tenancy doesn't exceed 12 months. As well as, before the tenancy begins, the landlord gives notice in writing to the tenant that the property may be recovered on this ground. The property was let out by an educational establishment or to an entire household in full-time education. For this, the notice period would be two months. The student sector. There are several reasons that the student sector would need different proposals compared to the rest of the private rented sector, with the first being the student renting period is seasonal, meaning that there are very specific times in which a property is required by students. Landlords need to have confidence they can provide vacant properties every August slash September and periodic tenancies could add difficulties in guaranteeing this. Another reason is that if a tenant is no longer a student, they are considered professionals and therefore liable for council tax. Some courses also last longer than others, meaning that the property would be liable for council tax at certain points. Having a fixed tenancy within the academic year would prevent this occurring. It can also be difficult to switch between student and family lets due to licensing issues as the HMO license of the property could be affected as it changes the planning use of the property. So the landlord cannot switch back to letting to students without the council's permission. We will endeavour to keep our landlords informed of any further progression with this bill and inform you of how it may affect your investments. For any further questions, please call our property experts on 01273 645 797. Thank you.